More sound of the suburbs now. They came out of Kent like some kind of horrible experiment involving Liza Minnelli, Bella Lugosi, and Max Factor. <laughs> Susie Sue and Steve Severin were part of the Sex Pistols cult following, the Bromley contingent. They nicked their image from cabaret, dodgy insignia and all. Susie and the Banshees were born at the Yandra Club's first punk festival, with one Sydney Vicious on drums and future Ant Marco on guitar, to perform a rendition of the Lord's Prayer, 23 years before Sir Cliff. It was a real gauntlet because we knew we couldn't play. It was almost like, well, you know, let's... I don't know, I had, I had ideas of people being nauseous or faint, you know, just dying from the horrible noise of it all. I mean, even they'd have to admit that it was like, um, sort of, a bit rough and ready. It was actually a great racket. I can't cope with fucking noise. We got away with it and, and built a, a long career on that one moment. But it was nothing to do with, like, any idiot can do it, because any idiot can't do it. In the excitement that followed, the pair recruited like-minded weirdies to take punk in a new, artier direction. For me, it wasn't like a, a doll cue punk thing, you know, although I had no future, actually. Right from the beginning, my central point of focus for really would have been uh, Susie, because she had that very staccato, very clipped, very uh, punctuated vocal. Although part of the punk elite, spiky sex goddess Susie scared the pence off record companies. It took almost two years of gigging before the Banshees got a record deal goes back to the resistance there was to sign as pistols. I mean, you know, they were the original, they were for the real deal. People didn't want to get too close to her, just in case she nutted them. We're actually considering signing to BBC Records. Don't forget, there was a Chinese restaurant in Chiselhurst called the Hong Kong Garden. Me and my friend were really upset that we used to go there and like occasionally when the skinheads would turn up it would really turn really ugly these, these gits were just going on mass and just terrorize these chinese people working there we we try and say leave them alone you know it was a kind of tribute the early banshees themes are sort of madness and childhood and escaping suburbia and things like that. Which are themes that hadn't been dealt with at all in, in rock music or pop music before. Our intention was to somehow um, disturb people. We didn't like the idea of sounding like anyone else, but and we couldn't even if we wanted to. Their unique sound was captured perfectly on the seminal album, The Scream. It would prove to be their punk epitaph. Like from the music that was on it, the production, everything. The photography for the front, the layout, everything. Perfect. There we are. Here's a tombstone. Sure enough, this incarnation of the Banshees was buried in 1979 after mounting tensions came to a head in an Aberdeen record shop. I'd had enough. I walked out of the shop. Kenny, to my surprise, followed me. I didn't expect him to. And uh, we just kind of kept going. They'd left their pillows on their beds with their tour passes pinned to them, and that was it. Although guitarists would come and go, former Slits drummer Budgie moved in permanently. It was like adopting and changing so I fitted. I think Happy House was where I really kind of, you know, started to say something about where I felt like, you know, somewhere between Keith Moon and Ginger Baker and me. The 
The band's fourth album put them at the front of a chillingly daft new scene, goth. The music around the time of Juju, you could say, pretty much invented the genre. Um, I don't think that's too preposterous a claim. While other punk bands came and went, the Banshees went on developing until a characteristic lapse in protocol cost them their record deal. Basically because Susie had done one of, one of her, another one of her interviews for Time Out where she basically said she wouldn't piss on Polydor if it was on fire. Oh well, with 18 hits they hadn't done badly for a group who just wanted to make a racket. In 96, Susie and Steve decided to let the axe fall on the Banshees. Susie's role was to be the kind of figurehead through all of this and, and something that you could actually uh, uh, aspire to. God, I bet she hated that. Susie and now husband Budgie have resurrected their long-standing splinter group, The Creatures, as adventurous as ever, but a little bit wiser. We do feel like we're starting again, in a way. It's a very positive situation of, um, you know, I can't wait to see what we do next.